Hello students, in this session we will be discussing on the what are the various elements of the railway track and also we will be covering the uh, what is a railway gauge and what are all the various uh, requirements of providing a railway gauge and the classification of the railway gauge will be covered in this session. So first uh, let us look into the uh, permanent way. What is an permanent way and what are the elements of the permanent way? So the picture here will show you the, the components, the various components and the elements of the permanent way. So first we'll define what is an permanent way or you can also call, the, call that as an elements of railway track. So, so uh, the track or the permanent way on the rail is nothing but the uh, railroad on which your, the train will runs. And it is a combination of the rails so that will be fitted on the sleeper and which rests on the ballast and the subgrade. So the combination of all these things we call it as the permanent way. And the permanent way how do we construct it? So as I told you we require the rails which will be fitted on the sleeper that will rest on the ballast and finally um, um, fi the ballast will be taken on the subgrade. So now here uh, we will fit the rails into the rails is fitted to the sleeper with the help of the fish plates and the fish bowls and they are uh, rested on the sleepers with the help of the railway fastening. So we will have the different types of the fastening which is used to connect the uh, rails with the sleepers and the sleepers will finally rest on the ballast. Okay, and um, also whenever you construct the permanent way, you should ensure that the rails are properly, the different rail sections are properly fitted with the uh, fish plates. And also these sleepers, when you provide these sleepers, okay, now we'll just uh, look into the picture, what are the various uh, components here. So uh, you can see here, these two are the rail section. Nothing but the, these are all the steel girders on which you are trains will run that is what what you can see the track sections okay so now here uh, the rails uh, the distance between the these two rails need to be maintained uniform distance need to be maintained okay and the distance between the two subsequent uh, rails we call it as the gauges and also the sleepers sleepers are nothing but the wooden or the concrete um, girders so on which uh, your rails will be fitted okay and the distance between the sleepers need structure so first all your train roads will be taken by the rails and the through the rails that will be subsequently transferred to the uh, sleeper section and then uh, the ballast material will take the load and finally it will be transferred to the subglade okay so that's why each and every component in the railway section has to be properly designed so that it will be able to carry the load from the railway track and also now these um, whenever the uh, train section will taken on the uh, level section so the two uh, height of the two different rail sections should be at the equal level but whereas when it is taken on the uh, curve section so what we have to do is outer edge is outer rail is raised slightly with respect to the inner jet so because we all know there is effect of centrifugal force on the curve so to, to counteract the tip effect of centrifugal force we need to raise the outer rail with respect to the inner rail and that will be achieved by using the proper ballast filling so what we have to do is fill the more ballast on the um, outer edge compared the lesser ballast cushion and the lower edge. So with the help of the maintaining your uh, subgrade level and the ballast filling, you can achieve the uh, provision of super elevation at the curve. And also the entire the permanent way we will it will regard it as a semi elastic material. Okay, so because um, why we call it as a semi elastic material? So under the application of the wheel load that will deflect and it will come back to the original position once the uh, load is removed. Okay, and um, uh, and also the track component should be constructed keeping in the um, view of all the requirements of the various component layer and which is possible with the help of it we can achieve higher speed and the better railing riding quality and one more thing with the minimum maintenance so that is always required for us so whenever you construct any track that should have a less maintenance be properly maintained as you can see here this is what the um, 
the steel girders so this we call it as the rails and the sleepers the wooden sections or we call it as the sleepers the distance between the these two sleepers need to be maintained properly and also the spacing between these two now uh, any two sleepers has to be properly filled up with the packing of the ballast ballast is nothing but the were aggregates filling what we will use okay. and also the layer of uh, these ballast will rest on the prepared subgrade that need to be maintained so now uh, how the load transfer will takes place in case of now uh, we we'll to that what are the requirement as i told you the permanent has way has to be con uh, constructed keeping in the view of some of the requirement so now what are all the um, major basic requirement of a permanent way so now here uh, there should be a proper the gate should be correct and the uniform what is a gate the distance between the two rail section okay so entire track section you should have a correct and the uh, uniform gate section the distance need to be maintained properly and this to be of a proper level so proper level when it comes to the proper level we have two section the first section is when it is on a straight track and another is on a curves okay when it when you take the uh, permanent way on the straight track the two uh, the uh, level of the two rails has to be same but on the car as i told you earlier outer edge is be raised with respect to the inner edge and also what the alignment you construct that should be correct and there should not be have any irregularities and uh, it should have a proper resilient and elastic property so that the shock uh, absor it can absorb the, the track components as will have sufficient resistance to absorb the shocks and vibrations of the running tracks which are at the very high speed carrying a heavy load and also uh, the alignment to the track should the drainage properties of the track component should be very good and um, which will enhance the safety as well as the durability of the track and on the curve the, the track should be designed and maintained for the proper radii and super elevation because the safety at which your trains will run on the curves that would mainly depends upon the how much the radius you have provided and what is the super elevation okay that will decide the what is the speed also the safety components when the trains travels on the curves and also uh, all the joints and crossings has to be maintained properly so we will be discussing what are all these joints at the crossing in the railway section so anyways whatever the component we will have in the permanent way all those things need to be designed and as well as that need to be maintained properly and we have to provide a uh, they should have a adequate provision for the easy renewal and replacement if any section of your permanent way is damaged or if it is failed to meet the requirements it should be possible for us to easy renewal and replacement of such particular component and also the various components such as the rail fittings sleepers ballast formation must have must satisfy the requirement or the, or then either it should uh, be if we, if you feel that at any time the requirement is not satisfying it should be uh, it should be probably possible for us to improve or replace the same so these are all the some of the ideal requirements of the permanent way that your track has to be constructed keeping all these points in the mind so the next we have the first component um, of the railway track is the rail gauges okay as you can see here in the picture these two will gives you the uh, uh, these two will gives you the um, shows the rail section and the distance between the inner edge of these two rails we call it as the gate okay so the gate will be measured with as a distance between the inner or running face of the two rail section or you can also call it as a, a clear distance between the inner or running face of the two track of the two uh, rail rail tracks okay so now we'll be discussing here what are all the various types of the railway gauges and what are the requirement and the classification of the rail gauges and how you can select the uh, various type of the railway gauges we'll be studying further so now here depending upon the what is the width you provided distance between the inner end of the two rail section in indian railways we are having the three uh, four different types of the railway gauges 
so now the first one we have what we have call it as the broad gauge and it is very popularly called as the standard gauge so but that the width of the broad gauge is 1.67 so distance between the these two mean is 1.676 meter and the second one is the meter gauge that is uh, width is um, the distance between the clear distance is slightly reduced to 1 meter the second next we have the narrow gauge with the gauge width of 0.762 and the last one is the feeder track or the light gauge with the width the 0. Uh, 0.610 so combining these two together we call it as the narrow gauge only with its uh, having a range width of 0. 0.762 to 0. 0.610 that the different um, types of when you have to choose the different various types of the railway gauge so now uh, we'll uh, look uh, what are all the uh, what are the where, when you have to come. We'll look into that the first one the first type of the gauge what we have is the broad gauge so broad gauge as i already mentioned you the broad gauge the distance between the inner end of the wheel wheel is 1.676 meter so as you can see this is the wider one wider gauge among all different category of the gauge and where it will be suitable and it will be only suitable when the sufficient funds are available okay so to construct always the wider gauge we require a lot of funds and also it will be very um, it will be choose only in those area where the we expect the the traffic is more i mean to traffic in the terms of both passengers and the goods so when there is a heavy movements of the passengers as well as the goods only in those area you can go for the use of the broad gauge and also uh, when in such area where prospective revenues are bright okay so where there is a economical activities are bright in particular area so in such cases we can use the broad gauges and also it is uh, that's why uh, keeping in these two mind um, available front and the prospective revenue so this gauge will be therefore used in the plain areas and also where there are population is densely packed and also that is the where you are having a maximum traffic and intensity and the place at which um, there is a center of industries and the commerce so maybe the two, two, two different places which will connect the major cities or the uh, major industrial areas so in such cases we can go for the construction of the broad gauges and in india we also call this as a standard gauge and which will be adopted in most of the railway track sections and uh, the other countries which are also using adopted the broad gauges are um, as uh, similar to the india which includes the pakistan bangladesh sri lanka brazil argentina etc and in uh, india whatever the total railway track we have sort of it um, 50 percent of the railway track will having a gauge width of the broad gauge so which is provided with the gauge width of 1.676 meter the second one is the meter gauge so now in the meter gauge the width is 1.00 meter okay it's quietly the narrow one compared to the broad gauge so width is quietly reduced here so and the uh, we have the suitability where it will be suitability so when the funds of the railway projects are not sufficient or not, uh, not inadequate you can go for the construction of the meter gauge and also in the areas where the prospectors are not very bright so especially meter gauge in, will be used in the underdeveloped area so uh, or when you expect the area to be developed in such areas and also interior areas so where the traffic is small and the prospective future development is also not very bright so only in this rose region we can go for the constructions of the meter gauge and the last one we have the narrow gauge so in the narrow gauge we have the width restrictions to uh, 0 0.762 to 0 0.610 meters so when you have the this particular width will be provided only when there are constructional difficulties whenever there is it is not at all possible for you to either to construct the meter gauge or the broad gauge only then we will go for the narrow gauge such regions include so we will have the restrictions we will have at the sharp curves or the gradients on the bridges and in the tunnel section maybe we may not have a sufficient width or land availability for the construction of the wider gauge so in such circumstances you can go for the use of the narrow gauges and also uh, this will be adopted only for those places where the prospective revenues are not bright 
and uh, especially it will be constructed in the hilly and very thinly populated areas so now uh, have is the uh, all these points in the view so we will discuss upon the how to select a rail gauges for any particular uh, construction of the any particular track section with connecting the two different points so some of the factors which will govern the choice of the different gauges will include the first one is the cost of construction volume and the nature of traffic development of the area physical features of the country and the speed of the movement so we'll look into that how it will affect the selection of the different type of the railway gauges the first one we have is the cost of construction so now uh, whenever you change the any rail gauges so uh, the cost of construction will increase only marginally okay, if the widened gauges are adopted so but um, the cost of uh, building uh, bridges culverts tunneling etc will also mark in them so whatever may be respective of the type of the rail gauges you select so when you take the alignment on particular section wherever the um, channel has to be constructed bridge has to be constructed there is no option you have to go for the construction of such the various components that is essential for you so uh, the cost of construction will not increase very much whenever you chase the rail section but um, the cost of land acquisition will be proportionally increased with the wider gauge so if you want to go for the wider gauge we need to adopt the uh, acquire the more land that will increase the cost of uh, land acquisition and also the earthwork the number of sleepers you require number of the ballast how much the ballast filling you need to fill and um, that will all increases along with the when you go for the choose the wider gauges and also the cost of construction of the buildings like uh, platforms railway station staff quarters uh, level crossing signals etc so this is like um, same for all irrespective of what is the type of the gauge you select you need to provide all such facility for each and every type of the track section so the cost of construction of such uh, build station buildings will not change um, uh, along with the uh, wider gauges choosing the wider gauges and uh, also the uh, cost of the when it comes to the cost of rolling stock rolling stocks is nothing but the running parts maybe the locomotives the engines what we use so that will also be remain same for all type of the gauges but only the cost what we're just changing is the what is the cost of land acquisition and the cost of um, width uh, cost of the uh, various components maybe the sleepers so that will consider as proportionally increase when you choose for the wider tracks the next consideration when you select for these uh, rail different the rail gauge required is the volume and the nature of traffic obviously greater the traffic volume the greater will be the load carrying capacity thus it is possible for you to carry the heavier loads and um, the high speed can be achieved that's why uh, whenever you have the uh, tra high traffic volume it is for, it is should be um, choose for the wider gauges so maybe the broad gauge has to be used uh, and as well as the operating cost per uh, ton kilometer is also less for higher load carrying capacity the next one is the development of the area so as we already discussed where, where we have to choose the different types of the railway gadgets so in those regions where the prosperity of development in future is high and also where there is a um, more industrial and commerce development so we can go for the usage of the wider tracks and the narrow gadgets uh, will be used only in those regions which are likely to develop and which are thinly a populated area so especially um, and in the underdeveloped area with the or in the urbanization urbanized area so we can go for the use of the narrow gauges and the la next one is the physical features of the country so uh, wherever there is a restriction to the width especially when you have the hill stations or very very uh, the sharp curves are expected you can go for the choose of the narrow gauges and the broad gauges will be in all other regions where in the plain terrain we will go for the construction of the broad gauges and the last one is the speed of the movement so if the higher speed need to be achieved so speed and the gauge width are proportional to each other greater the gauge width the higher speed can be achieved and lower speed always see whenever the lower speed is provided it will discourage the 
passengers so hence um, it is always you should intend and to maintain the uh, broader gauge so that um, higher speed can be achieved and it will attract the passenger so these are some of the points you need to keep it in mind when you go for the selection of the any particular type of the railway gauges the next topic we have related to the uniformity of the rail gauges so now what is this uniformity of rail gauges and what is the requirement of the providing the uniformity in the rail gauges so nothing but in india we have different track section which is connecting between the different part so now uniformity has come to picture nothing but providing the same gauge width into out the entire country means whatever the track you construct in india so you must be constructed only with the help of the broad gauge or the standard gauge so you need to maintain the equal width on the entire section of the track within the throughout the country and what is the requirement why we have to maintain the uniform gauge so now we'll first look into that what are all the difficulties that may we come across if we have the different rail gauges so now first thing is um, whenever your track section changes from broad gauge to meter gauge so now rolling stock whatever you use here the same train cannot be used in the um, uh, broad meter gauge section because there is a width difference so what is the distance between the uh, two axles the wheels on the axles that will changes here on the different railway section so uh, where a different train has to move on these two section so now whenever um, the rail train section changes from broad gauges to meter gauge what are all the difficulties that will come across to you so now the passengers and the goods what we have in this train need to be transferred to the the gauge with these smaller gauges so now there will be a delay can be expected while transferring the uh, co delay cost as well as the time will increase as well transshipping the passengers as well as the goods from one vehicle of one gauge to the other vehicle so if you provide a uniform gauge that delay can be avoided and also this tra uh, the, during the transshipping there are chances of breakage of the goods that breakage can be eliminated if you provide the uniform gauge and also the difficulty during the loading and unloading of the um, goods can be avoided and the labor expenses what it is required for you that can also be saved and also uh, while transferring the goods from one train to another train there is uh, chances of misplacement and the theft can happen so that can be completely eliminated and um, while transferring maybe it cannot happen over a night so we may have to store your goods in the larger sheds so if you construct a uniform gauges the construction of that larger sheds wherever the at the place of transferring the goods from one vehicle to other vehicle that is not required so i mean to say that whenever they you have there is a change in this section from meter gauge to one gauge to the other gauge so here you may have to construct the additional uh, railway station the additional larger shed so now to avoid all these difficulties it is required for us to maintain the uniformity of the rail gauges so wherever but when it, whenever there is a acute uh, requirement um, provide the narrow gauges okay there is not a possible there is not at all possible to provide the uniform gauges yes in such cases you can deviate it but wherever it is possible make sure that um, your rail gauge will be uni and next the locomotives uh, can be effectively used on all type of the gauges so if you have one single track section or width so in type with respect to of um, reason you can use whatever the locomotives that are available that can be used on the entire track section and also the the duplication of equipments or such as the platform sanitary arrangements so that is not required for the storage of goods the platforms may be required and the sanitary arrangements so that duplication is um, is eliminated and you can avoid it and it will save the lot of extra expenditures and also during the military movement so which is of greater importance so will, there will not be any time wasted in changing the person and the war equipments from one vehicle to the another vehicle when you provide the uniform gauges and also uh, coming to the uh, uh, quite expensive so when it is uh, when you want to change from 
uh, meter gauge to the broad gauge as at in and in the future if you want to increase the gauge which so that the cost which is required for you is very expensive so uh, as in case of the uh, roads uh, you cannot just keep on adding one lane next to each other okay so entire track section has to be constructed newly so that the cost of uh, upgrading the to the higher gauge with this very expensive in the future stages and also the construction of the fresh widening of the bridges and channels that will also be very costly for you form in the entire so these are all about the uh, the gauges what are the different types and the requirement and as well as the why what is the requirement of choosing the uniformity of the gauges section to the countries so next the uh, component what we have is the rails Okay, okay, this is the second, second component. component. The first word we discussed was the gauges. gauges. The second the component, component in a permanent way is, is the rails. rails. So now, what are the rails? So rails are nothing but considered the steel girder. So which is purpose is to carry your axle load. So your uh, wheel, wheels will be carried on these steel girders, and ultimately this is the one which will in contact with the wheel, and that will take the axle loads and uh, so that's why it should be um, constructed with the uh, manufactured with the help of the high quality high carbon steel so that um, it should withstand the wear and tear since it is in direct contact with the moving loads which is moving at a very high speed so there are chances that your uh, uh, rail uh, rail section get wear okay so you should have it should be made up of uh, manufactured with the proper material so that it can consider um, with the standy wear and tear so usually we will choose high carbon steel with the um, following proposition the carbon content should be in between 0 0.6 to 0.8 percentage manganese 0 0.8 to 1.5 silicon and sulfur phosphorus and aluminium so we have the proper proportion is uh, prescribed and whenever you manufacture the rail section this proportion has to be keep it in mind so that you can have the higher capacity and uh, there will be a resistance to the wear and tear of the section. So next we'll look into the what are all the various uh, functions that is served by the rail section. So now the rails will provide it uh, to provide a hard, smooth and uh, unchanging surface for the passage of the heavy moving load. So with the maximum friction between the steel rails and the steel wheels and also since um, it is in direct contact with the axle load axle loads are transmitted on the rail sections so that should have sufficient uh, bear the sufficient stress that is developed because of the heavy loads and also the lateral and also it should uh, withstand the stresses de developed because of the braking force and also the thermal expansion in the construction that will ex um, occur because of the change in temperature of the rail section and also the material used in the rail section should give the minimum wear uh, so because the, whenever the rail section wears you need to completely replace it okay so if you if the rail section what we use is having a resistance to the wear so you can avoid the replacement charges and the failures of the rails due to the wear and also it should have a capability to transfer the loads to the sleepers and it will consequently reduces the pressure on the uh, formation and the ballast below the rail section. These are the major functions served by the rail sections. Rails. So now here the picture here will show you the, the what are all the various um, rail fittings that can be used. Um, so here picture here indicates the various uh, rail fastening which is used to connect your rail with the sleeper. So you can see here there is a rail section. The rail is divided into head, web and the foot section. The sleeper. So the rails are connected to the sleeper with the help of uh, you can see here we have the chair bolts with the chair. Chair keys are provided. And also uh, the one rail section is connected with the other rail section with the help of the fish plate and the fish bolts. So anyways, we'll be discussing in details about the rail fittings in the coming classes. So with this, I will conclude the today's session and the tomorrow's class will continue the discussion with the rails. Thank you.